Welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health meeting on September 9th, 2020 at 5.28 uh, p.m. Uh, at the uh, yeah. me main meeting room in the municipal offices uh, at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with, the, with adequate alternative means of public access and were required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL chapter 30A, section 20. Meetings are typically broadcast on the Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT, remote meeting connection below. The dial-in number is 312-626. 6799 or 929-205-6099 or the U.S. toll-free number is 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. Meeting attendees will please mute their phone, star six for landlines, unless asking questions or commenting. All attendees should want to speak until other participants are finished. Thank you very much. Um, the select board is now going into executive session. The chair so declares that a quorum of the members are in attendance to this meeting and that the open meeting would be detrimental to negotiating the position of the public body on the following actions. A member of the select board moves. So moved. Uh, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 21, a3, the select board will enter into executive session to discuss strategy and preparation preparation for negotiations with respect to collective bargaining or litigation if an open meeting may be detrimental effect on the bargaining or litigation position of the public body and will resume an open session at the end of the executive session for our regular meeting. Um, do I have a second? Dave Wolfram, second. The vote will be roll call. So all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. And I, Carolyn Ness. Thank you very much. We intend to um, come back out in, uh, and have our regular meeting at around 6.30. Thank you. Uh, we are opening up with a hearing to lay out a public way. The Deerfield Select Board, pursuant to Mass General Laws, Chapter 82, Section 22, will hold a layout hearing to extend Merrigan Way as shown on the sign ANR plan provided by Heritage Surveys dated August 21st, 2020, which is available at the town clerk's office or on the town's website. Merrigan Way is approximately 779 feet in length with approximately uh, 54,365 square um, footage. This layout altercation, uh, alteration will add approximately 50 feet in length and approximately 16,807 square feet um, footage to the road. The layout hearing will be held during the select board uh, meeting on September 9th, 2020 at 6.30 p.m. in the municipal offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass., or via remote participation. Meetings normally held at the municipal offices are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with the governor's March 12th, 2020 order superseding certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Section 20. Meetings may also be broadcast on the Frontier Community Access Television, FCAT, remote meeting connection below is toll free 833-548-0276. Meeting ID is 911-604-1580 
and the passcode is 570012. Meeting attendees will please mute their phones, star six, for landlines unless asking questions or commenting. All attendees mu must wait to speak um, when others are finished. Okay. Um, Kevin, do you want to just um, give us a little background? Finally, we're getting this done, and this will um, hopefully mean that it was properly done. Certainly. Um, back when the town had uh, purchased the property and then the highway garage went over, there was a point in time, uh, I can't remember how many years ago it was, but they, they started to um, chop up the property into two, two lots. And the last time it was done, one of the lots was landlocked. And it was because of the people that were, that were purchasing the other land, that's how they wanted it, so that's what the town did. Now we have the opportunity to make this right for parcel B, which is where the manufacturing is now, to make him a legal lot. Okay. And we can put the rest on the market, finally. Correct, the rest on the market. Great. Um, is there any comment or discussion? I, no, I'm just happy we got that done. And good, oh, good thank God we finally got it done. Been in contact with everybody about we've got our. I just can't believe it's been a year. Right away, and yeah, but we finally got this correct. Um, I'm pretty good. Okay, Dave, do you have any comments? No, any? no. Okay, it's just it's about time. Yep, it's definitely about time. So I will take a motion to um, close, the close the hearing <coughs> and then vote on the proposal. Okay, no public comment. Is there any public comment on this at this point before we close the hearing? I think everybody wants it on the tax rolls as quick yes. as possible. So let's close so the hearing motion. and get this going. Make a motion to close the hearing. Daniel. Dave Wolf from second it. Okay. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay, I will entertain a motion to accept this layout. I make a motion to accept the layout, Trevor McDaniel. American Way. Dave Wolf from second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Great. All right, Casey, Wait. we're done. Who made the motion? <laughs> Trevor. I made both motions. Who made the motion? Trevor, Trevor, made both. Trevor made both. And Dave seconded. Okay. Thanks, Trevor. Yep, thank you. Thank you for putting this down and getting this done, yeah, Casey. Yeah, I really appreciate all your work on that. I'm, I'm sorry that you had to, this dumped on your lap, but we needed to get this done. Okay. Yeah, I know. Sorry it took so long. All right. Um, so let's, uh, going down. Kevin, as long as you're still here, <laughs> that way on. we'll save you from uh, having to dial in. Okay. Can We'll just jump down to the assistant uh, superintendent job description. Um, I've okay. That would, I... would that be okay, Dave? Yeah. Okay. Um, Kevin, do you um, want to just uh, discuss that a little bit? Um, yes. Uh, basically, what we're attempting to do is we're trying to bring up a, a assistant uh, superintendent's ah. position. The existing foreman, highway foreman, has since retired, and the town has the opportunity to bring this up to the 21st century, basically. Okay. Um, it's right now, you know, this is not the job of 20 years ago. Right. You know, the 20 years ago, the job was just going out and looking at the road, now we about it. And now, between MVP, RSAP, ASAP, all the other things we're trying to go for, for grants and, and things, it's, there's just no time to do everything that needs to be done. I am a dire need of help. Yep. Yep. No, I just want good. to uh, acknowledge how many hours you put in all the time, Kevin. Well, historically, we get paid, a lot. A lot we get paid of hours. two weeks. And on that, it's supposed to be an 80 hour week or 80 hours for two weeks. My average is about 43 to 47 hours on top of the 80 hours. Yeah. So, so it will burn. 
I know. Yeah, it's a lot. I know, and I appreciate all Kevin, the Kevin, I, I, I want you to know we really do appreciate you. Okay. I've, I, I mean, honestly, I do. I've read through um, this pretty well, and I, I'm very, very pleased with the way it's laid out, um, the tasks that we're looking for. Um, obviously, we'll have to think about um, budget for it, but I, um, it's you know, sorely needed and, and to give you guys the support to get these, you know, get the projects done that, that we really need It's done. just so much more complexity in mm -hmm. everything. And, and we just expect more of you. That's the other thing. Yep. And we'll um, give you that help to get that stuff done. Honestly, it's just constant, whether it's the sewer or the roads. Or, I mean, we just have storms all the time. I mean, we have tree damage all the time. Well, I mean, every, every, time, every time we get a storm that rolls through, it, it sets me back minimum one to five days. I know. So the last storm that came through uh, set me back three days. Uh, going back to the 4th of July, um, where we had a storm on the Thursday, and then we had another storm, I believe it was on the Tuesday. Uh, that set me back for almost 10 days. Just between chasing down trees, cleaning up the down trees, and then fixing the washed out roads. I know. So it's, it's a lot. We're, I know. Okay, so Casey, you're going to post this, right? So what do we need to do is Personnel you guys need to accept the job description, and then it needs to be forwarded to personnel. the personnel board, and I've already asked them to put it on their agenda. Great. They need to approve it, and then do they have we a need schedule? to... Do they, excuse me, do they have a scheduled meeting? They do, next week. Oh, perfect, yes, okay. I just didn't want this sitting around for like a month. And then, um, no, we do need to figure out, you know, uh, a range of salary that we want to advertise yes. to this as yes. well. I, but, uh, and I the mean, personnel. This is a big part. Yeah, potentially, right? Yeah. Uh, I would like. This is one of the reasons we need to have a town meeting. Yeah. Yeah. I would like to. Um, yeah, I would make a motion to uh, approve this. This schedule and forward it on, I mean, the job description and forward it on to the um, personnel board to review and approve. Dave Wolf from second. Okay. Is there any further discussion on this? No. Nope. Okay. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Dave Wolf. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Listen, Casey, thank you. I yep. appreciate this and I appreciate you getting the personnel board to um, together to look at this. In a relatively you, timely Yeah, they've manner. already approved the job and name. They just haven't seen the job description because I didn't have one at the last month's meeting. So thank Kevin for reviewing it for me. Yep. That's um, great. And really good. Kate has also um, given her two cents worth because we needed to be mindful of how we fit this into a larger structure. Yep. So we're in a good position, but I will convey your, your comments yep. on it. Thank you. Their next meeting. And you're welcome to attend next Monday. It's it's actually, um, I think, an hour before the planning board meeting. Okay. Um, all right, Kevin. Yeah. Is there, yeah, is there anything else you wanted to bring up with us before you left? Um, no, it's just, uh, you know, things are, we're just continuing moving forward. <clears throat> you know, we've got the uh, Mill Village culvert that's been taken care of. We're going to be moving forward very shortly to the Kelleher Drive. Um, I'm going to say that's probably going to be in the next two and a half weeks. We're hoping it was going to be next week, but we're getting a little bit of pushback from the uh, people that are actually making the culvert itself, the concrete mm -hmm. people. It's taking a little longer. Um, so that's taking a little bit longer, and we're looking at replacing the culvert on the 305 Lower Road. That road will be closed the entire day. The road's not wide up there to deal with two sections. And then within three days after that, we will be spending almost $800,000 to take care of Lower Road from the Twin Bridges all the way to the Greenfield Line. And then we'll be going on Upper Road from the Greenfield Line to uh, Clarkdale, roughly. Old Albany Road. Old Albany, yep. Good. And then after that is done, within two weeks, I have to put some type of wear service on it whether it be rubber and stone, yep. or whether it be just more asphalt. But um, you know, we're going through, and, and you know, just once again, I just need to make people aware that any of the paving that is done in town is strictly state money. You know, right. there's, 
no town money that is being used for right. for payment. I know. Uh, yeah. We do use some for for patching. Yeah. Um, but the actual paving, that's all chapter ninety. I noticed uh, Conway did the uh, on Waitley Road. They did the base and they did the chip seal ceiling on top. You know, it's a lot rougher for sure. Yes. But and then I, and as as I you know I was talking to somebody about it, you can then recode it again. It makes that base last a lot longer exactly. and and your money stretch a little longer. Exactly. That, that's why when we did Stillwater Road. Paved it, came out yep. absolutely beautiful. Then we went back over the top of it with the wear surface. Yep. So now, all we should ever have to be able to do with that road is rubber and stone. Right. Because the base should never change as long as it's taken care of properly. Right, and it, and not waited too long for. Exactly. Yeah. Kevin, I, I know the people on Lower Road will be thrilled to death. Yeah. Sure. Because. <laughs> Road is rough, you know? Any kids that want a skateboard, not so much. Yeah. But <laughs> not so much. You know? yeah. And there are going to be some, some people that we've already had discussions with, and there's a few more of uh, where their material is coming out of their driveway and going into the town road. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I, I saw that. We've the three so far, and we come collectively to an agreement on how we're going to go by. Uh, and then there's just a few others that we have to have discussions with. Yeah. But that's basically what we need to go with is, is, yep. is to try and keep people keep their stuff out of the road, you know. Yep. And then I want to hit it on while you're here. Uh, thank you for all your help on the clarifier. We just, I think we got the sufficient or most of the completion on that on that project right now, which yeah, is great. Close. We signed off on that, and then very close. very close to finishing up on that, which is great, uh, really great. Before the contractor, the vendor was absolutely fantastic. Their water line was they awesome. Water line, they were awesome. Up front, um, and actually, I mean, never mind. I'm not going to make a point because maybe confusing with somebody else. Yep. No, they were um, they were you excellent. Know that there was a reduction. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we had, did have a change order. Okay, was was, it, so was it was a few thousand order, bucks so less. Like $7, yes. Order, exactly. So they saved us money. Yep. Instead I, of finding a way of spending, spending money. Which I yeah. Was very fun. No, they were great. They were great. So I'd be very happy to see if they might be one of the people that be bidding on the next project. The next project mm -hmm. I, I was just going to say, let's recruit them. Yeah. Exactly. No, they were great. They I, were great. That's what I so understand. hopefully they will um, they will move forward. So um, moving forward, yep. you know, um, the standard thing: please don't flush with wipes. Please. Oh my no. gosh. Wipes. No wipes. Body and it's not a toilet paper. Don't flush it. Just um, go in the trash. Five and a half hours pushing a brick out of the sewer line. Last week. Yeah. Uh, How did the so brick get there? Throw it down the tube. I don't know. I believe it might have been part of when they did paving job. Never heard the term before. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't get there. No, <laughs> do not go there. Uh, do not no, go we're, there. We're fortunate because DPC no. was up here doing the, the inspections of all the lines, the, the sewer lines, yep. and he was instrumental in within this because. He went downstream of it and he watched the brick and we were trying to push it down. And had he not been there to be able to watch exactly what was going on, we probably never would have got that brick out of there. It was, it was a nightmare. Like mm -hmm. I said, it literally is up to five hours. I can't believe that. That's so, terrible, yeah. Kevin. Uh, I'm yeah, so you, sorry. You'd be very surprised on some of the stuff you find in the sewer. It's, it's crazy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Oh, yeah. I know well, that thank Dave's you crew is doing a lot, a lot of. Um, all the camera work is going on and that is, you know, winding up pretty quick. And I spoke with him today, um, hoping for a meeting probably beginning of October. We'll have about 50% design done. Um, and then we'll, you know, probably what, what we talked about is having a um, several hour presentation here in this building. Everybody's, you know, spatially distanced map table in the in the middle people can go up and look at the plans and we just you know get our core group around this and, and really kind of figure out where we're at on that and um start looking at old deerfield as well so we're, we're getting moving on on all that i'm not, not slowing down but it's a lot to do it is it's a lot, a lot to do lot. yeah you know and i don't want to scare you but there's a lot of scary things i saw in the sewer i know and we are going to be having to do a lot of pipe. Definitely a lot of lining, yep. but there's going to be pipe some that's ended up having to come up because yep. we have separation of pipes. Right. So, or I should say offsets, not separation. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So yeah. There's, there's more, and again, I don't want to try and scare people, but there's more that's going to have to be done because of what we're able to find out and what we're able to see. Yep. A lot of that's pretty deep, too. Yeah. Yep. Like especially North Main Street. You yes. Know, you're, you're talking, that's going to be close to 16, 18 feet anyway. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Able, that's going to be horrendous. You know, to it do. is. If you get close to the center of town, it gets even deeper in there. Yep. Yeah. Like right there at the Park Street. That's gonna be all of 20, 25 feet. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I thought my That's way down. the deepest was around 30. I believe that. Yeah. So. That's wow. amazing. Oh, but it, it's interesting, you know, um, and one of, the, one of the reasons why I think the highway department, the sewer department, whatever you want to call us, we're so adamant about people when they're, when they're actually making hookups to our sewer, we want to make sure what's going on. On Fair Street, um, I did the background on it, and the person that, Owned the house before, they're dead, and nobody else seems to know when this was done, who did the work, but they were replacing a sewer lateral going into the main. Mm -hmm. So instead of just doing a standard cap, which is normal, yep. they took a two liter soda bottle and shoved it. Oh, in I saw that video. I yep. saw that. Yep. Oh my God, I know. So now the problem is, is you know, fortunately, that hasn't been an issue. Right. Um, but when he was going to do his camera, he couldn't get by it. Right. So it's he had to go so far, and he had to go around the other way and come back again. Yep. You know, again, that's, that's good like that for, I mean, I don't remember that happening. I've been here for 10 years. Right. So it was definitely 20 going years. for, you know, it was probably 15, 20 years ago. Right. Um, but the only way to fix it is to dig up the road. Right. That's a brand new road, less mm -hmm. than two years old. So right. That's, that's going to wait a little while. So. Yeah. Well, thank you for all you're doing. I really appreciate you, it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thanks for all the support. Yep. Now, the, uh, I hate bringing this up, but... <laughs> Uh-oh. Any, any plans to do any work on the sidewalks this year? Um, I reached out to um, TLC, Kayla Long here, because they're the, basically the one, one of the few people around to have um, a sidewalk paper. I've worked with Deerfield Academy, and they're still pretty much willing to go ahead and do some prep work for us. Um, I think the majority of the prep work that they'd be looking for in the beginning would be Old Deerfield. I told them, I said, you know, I said, that's nice. I said, well, we've done an awful lot of work in Old Deerfield, and we right. need to start showing we're starting to do something down here. So if we're doing anything down here, we would be going from the dry bridge at Jackson Road, heading south towards the center of town, Replacing as asphalt, not concrete. Yeah, makes um, sense. Concrete the picks up here. With going from Frontier back into the center of town, because that's where the west side of the sidewalk is done. Um, we would like to be able to get part of that done too. Unfortunately, you know, it's 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 huge money. Yeah. Um, Elm Street. That's gonna have to wait until you figure out what we're gonna do there because that's gonna be that's gonna be concrete. That's gonna be an animal all by itself. Yeah, we want. And a friendly reminder to everybody out there in TV land that the sidewalks on Sugarloaf Street belong to the state. Um, I know there's been a few people out there that have said, "Yes, I reached out to the state, and the state said that if we want to go ahead and fix it, we can." Of course, we can. That's great. <laughs> so, somebody wants to come up with the one point eight seven five million dollars that's going to take to go ahead and redo both sides of Sugarloaf Street. Give me money, I'll get it done. Okay. Well, actually, I think in the bond bill, remember we had met with them to negotiate yes. taking over Sugarloaf Street, right. and they Have were supposed to upgrade here. all the infrastructure, including the sidewalks. Right. And I do believe that it is in the bond bill. Mm -hmm. And it is moving forward, but it's like five years out. So, mm -hmm. I mean, we are working on it. I, I want people to know we are working on it. It's just with the state, we supported the bond bill. So it's included in the bond bill. So it will be happening, but we as a town are not taking it over until it is all up to snuff and then we'll take it over. So. Mm -hmm. The, whole, the deal was the state needs to make sure the catch basins are, are updated, they need to make sure the sidewalks are updated, and then we take it over. So, and it repaved the whole thing. Everything should be done and in 100% condi good condition. Then we'll go to town meeting and vote to take it over. But 
Mm -hmm. uh, as Kevin said, you know, there's a few million dollars in upgrades at least. So. Uh, one last thing I forgot is I had a meeting with uh, DOT District 2 this week. They are going to be starting uh, some of the resurfacing and widening of 5 and 10. Mm -hmm. They're starting at the truck stop and they're going to be going up as far as the fire station. Yep. Um, presently, from what I got out of the meeting, is they're going to be doing some part of their layout and they're going to be looking at the drainage for this fall. Mm -hmm. And then I told them that I was going to be needing a, a basically they put out a three week schedule. Right. So every three weeks, um, they said that they would send us a schedule, and I would share that with, with everyone. We'll put it up on the, uh, um, the town website so people are aware of what's going on. Yeah. Things going to be happening. They'll be doing, I think, some Kevin, pathways, some street lights, yeah. some, you know, they're, yeah, they're, they're going to redo quite a bit of that. Yeah, they're supposed to be putting sidewalks in. Yeah, they're supposed to be putting a sidewalk on the Yankee. west side, west side yeah, by the Yankee. Yankee. The Yankee yeah. Candle Farm. Um, and I would really like to make sure that the town is not going to be responsible for that sidewalk. Mm -hmm. it's a but the simple fact is, is we all know that present right now, when we deal with sidewalks, it's the last thing. Think about routes 5 and 10. Yeah. All the state trucks going back and forth. I can't get to that for probably four hours after the storm, five hours after the storm. Now I'm going to be trying to deal with ice. Yeah. Trying to break that apart. And it's, it's going to be a nightmare. Mm -hmm. No, we have to. We have Why to. Why are they on the west side, not the east side? Well, everybody walks, you know, from the the Yankee, and they walk um, down to the stores. So everybody's walking on that side. I don't, you know, maybe they don't want to do a crosswalk, and, they have unless to it's at right away Cumbies. Uh, adequate. Red, yeah, they come out of Red Roof. They walk down to the gas station. They walk back, and then they walk up to Yankee. Right. So. I can see on that end of the lights, but on this end of the lights, it would be... Oh, yeah, I don't oh, know. Oh, sorry, once we yeah. come to Elm Street... Yeah, then they sorry, cross over. Once we get on Elm Street, it is on the east side. Yeah, from okay. From here to the fire station. Yeah, okay. then it stops. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so. until they pick up another phase so, down the road. I think what we need to do is make sure somebody's reviewing the drainage, Kevin. Because this the is... The drainage new. around here isn't too much of the issue, but, but when when they start, because they, there is a... Well, there's... there's an old Deerfield or anything from uh, Bittersweets North to the Sunoco station. I have sent video and I have sent photos to the lead engineer in Boston saying you really need to think about what you can do here for drainage because you're killing these people, you're killing their septic systems, uh, there's no drainage here, you're flooding their front yards, uh, you, you need to take care of this while you're dealing with this. Mm -hmm. So they've had multiple years of advanced notice. Mm -hmm. I know. So they can't say, well, we didn't think about it, so... No, they, yeah, it's, it's you know, got to so be I in their plan. Yeah. All right, thank you I for do, doing that. I do think, though, that we, we do need to plan on a, um, a sidewalk plan for North Main, and we need to fund it. And so we have capital. Um, it's probably the number one thing that I'm asked for. Everything, every, every year, every, every year, every conversation, it is sidewalk. It's I not think the anything else would be in happy town. Even if they just saw a quarter mile of the thing, we, we uh, exactly. Have, we need to start on that. So, that and I think it's, it, I think it's up to us to to lay out that plan and what we want to do and and fund it and just get it done and schedule it and get it done. Whether it's help from them or it's a subcontractor that comes in and does it, we just got to get it on the schedule and get it done. Yep. But there needs to be the priority of where, and I, I agree. You know, dry bridge down and, and th th where the schools are walking, going up to the new park, you know, all that area kind of needs to get addressed. Um, and then when we pick up from, from this corner, this street forward, I'd like to have cement and um, to, to line up with every, every other piece I of cement I'd, in town. I really want some discussion about the cost of cement versus the cost of mm -hmm. pavement. Yeah, cement, I mean, asphalt the, that way, but cement's got to be downtown. That's where everything happens. Know, As you look at any downtown, but, it is cement. I also, you know, asphalt chips up, mm. and so I know it's more expensive to do concrete, but mm -hmm. I know, but does it last three times as long? I mean, does uh, it? Not no, because what the problem you have with concrete or cement on sidewalks is that it's not conducive to lifting and stuff. It cracks real easy compared to your asphalt. It's just down, put down correctly. That'll, that'll flex, and it won't crack as easily. It will over time. 
but I mean, you know, yeah. with the, the, the newer um, polymers that they're putting into the asphalt and stuff, it's a lot more forgiving. Concrete is not. And then when you get into the concrete, then when, when things lift, they lift in panels. Right. In sections. Okay. Uh, which is going to be challenging because you've got a lot of trees that are close pushing mm -hmm. the sidewalk. Yep. You know, it's not quite so bad on North Main Street, so we can do little rises to go over top of them. Obviously, we have to stay within the percentages right. as For far ADA. as ADA compliance comes yeah. into play. Yeah. But when they're talking about doing Sugarloaf Street, there's a lot of panels that are lifted because of roots, and I don't know what they plan on doing besides killing the trees. Right. Well, sometimes you uh, have to hop okay. it around. We're gonna but have yeah, to yeah. no, I do want to get, get okay, planning on that. Give some direction but, on oh, what Casey, we want to Oh, Casey, you had a question? Yeah, that's just waving at Kevin. And I don't since know. Kevin's there, I'm going to ask it. So, um, in counterpoint to the need to do these infrastructure projects like, like sidewalks and stuff, we also have things that we need to address in terms of the ADA requirements that Kevin and I have discussed. And you have a first read opportunity with your with the self-evaluation self and transition plan that's in your packet. Mm -hmm. I just want to make sure everybody understands that what we, what we put out for our ask, there's things that, are, that we need to make sure that we add as elements progressively, like you just said. Correct. Like putting a plan in place to right. address this stuff. ADA yep. stuff has got to be a part of that. Absolutely. In terms of our capital requirements. Absolutely. Yep. yep. I agree. Okay. 100%. Oh, thank you for bringing okay, that thank up. You. Thanks, Kevin. All right, very good. Thanks Kevin, well. thank, thank you. you. Yeah, Thanks, thank Kev. you. Thanks, Kev. Appreciate have a, all your have hard work. Have a lovely work. evening, and I'm sorry to add to your hours tonight. Yeah, thank you. It is part of the job. Well, we appreciate it. Um, the crown, will, the crown will be waiting for you. <laughs> the crown will be waiting for you. <laughs> you hear that, <laughs> thank Anyway, you. thank you, Kevin. Go with her tiara, right? Um, Getting back to select board reports, um, I just want to say uh, we're, we're having another meeting where uh, I kept promising that we're going to have John Pichork, our chief, and Jen Bartek back um, to continue more discussions. But there hasn't been any real movement on the state level at this point so um, on legislation. So there hasn't been anything to discuss as far as what our plan is to um, uh, in response to the requirements, new requirements. So again, we're going to push it off at least another two weeks or so, um, depending on whether there's any movement on the state level. So I didn't, I just want to make sure that people were aware that we are not, not discussing it. It's just, there isn't any new information at this point. Um, the one thing I wanted to make sure, uh, before we move on, is um, there's the radio meeting tomorrow night at six o'clock. Can Dave or Trevor? I've got school committee. Okay, because I'm so in a meeting too. Is I'm there gonna any try chance? and get on there, but oh. I- Where's that gonna be? It's a Zoom meeting, um, uh, FERCOG Zoom meeting that um, we can forward. Casey, do you have that registration? I think, I think John sent it to me. Let me check while you talk. Okay, well, I was hoping, Dave, do you think you could attend for us? I probably should be able to. Okay, great. Tomorrow's uh, Thursday, right? Tomorrow, Thursday at yeah. six o'clock. Okay. I mean, I can get on. I'm just worried I might not be on it. I mean, I might be like 45 minutes late because I'm meeting at five. That is supposed to be two hours and it pretty much goes two hours. So. Um, I was worried. It's important for us. It's not the question of whether we support it or not. We absolutely support it. Um, the John, of course, has been the spearhead for the whole county. He has single-handedly pretty much um, look, brought millions of dollars into the county to address this transfer to the 800 system. Mm -hmm. It's saving us tens of thousands of dollars in operating costs as a town, but also tens and tens of thousands of dollars to re, um, in money saved from uh, not replacing the current system and then maintaining the current system once it's been upgraded because it's fallen apart. Yep. So this is something that we absolutely support. Um, like I said, John has single-handedly really done it. I mean, I've only gone to meetings whenever he wants me to show up and tells me what to say. Um, we really, it's been John's 
John's um, effort that has been saving just not only the town of Deerfield, but the entire county millions of dollars. So I can't say enough about that. Um, but we need to make sure that we're there to support the effort because um, there are a few people that think that we can go out and afford to uh, bond and be independent from this from the state police, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. So um, we can't afford that. No, nope. we cannot afford that. No. So we just I just made make sure you speak. Okay, up. I'll touch base with John tomorrow. Okay, just make perfect. Sure that we're on the same page. Yep. All right. Um, is David, there I just I just registered you for the meeting. Okay. So is there anything else on the select board uh, from a select board announcement we want to make? Trevor, did you have anything or Dave? Um, no, just other than, you know, the school starts tomorrow. I'm really excited for, for all the students to try and get back, even though there, a lot of them will be online. There's a meeting tonight, starts right about seven minutes ago for a lot of the kids at Frontier. There was one last night for the elementary or for the middle school, but just getting people aware of how to get going on that. Um, so it's Everybody's all working super hard. Yep, all remote for a little while. Okay. Um, no, other than, you know, as I talked about, um, the sewer project is, is very close to um, completion. Um, they've had substantially completed the install um, of the clarifier and that we'll be moving on with the planning phase for, for phase one. Um, I know that Dave was going to talk to reach out to Casey and um, Bob about setbacks of the buildings there because one of them would be fairly close to the property line there. I wasn't sure if, um, if uh, you know, wastewater was exempt from some zoning. You have to ask Bob. Um, so Bob, Bob, maybe Dick and stuff could help kind of answer yeah. that with Casey to get him the answers he needs on that. Um, but no, other than that, it's been a crazy busy. <laughs> All right, yeah, I know. God, I, I, not enough time in the day. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. um, next item on the agenda is Board of Health announcements. I just want to say we had an excellent four town Board of Health meeting last Friday. Um, that we had an agreement that um, the local boards of health just can't keep track of the testing criteria. And um, there is capacity, there is availability. But every once in a while, there's the reagents or swabs or something is a shortage, and it just all of a sudden it stops. And the turnaround goes from 24 to 36 hours to could be a week, which is not acceptable. So uh, we voted to put it on the MAPCO Mohawk Area Public Health Coalition agenda, which since I set the agenda, it's not really an issue. But um, we're, we're going to ask the Health Medical Coordinating Coalition to um, be the monitor. They, they are the Western Mass uh, like over and above the county, like MAPCO groups, coalitions. So we're going to ask them. They're paid people, and they are supposed to watch the hospitals and all that kind of stuff. So um, the duty officer, I feel like it's it's you know given the situation, uh, having the every time they have a duty officer change every 24 hours, the person can just check and see what the turnaround is on the testing, and then get back to us. And there would be a point person in each school district so that you could have a policy that if all of a sudden the testing is halted for a week, then we would shut down for a couple days or three days or whatever time it takes to stabilize the situation. So um, we're going to follow up on that. Uh, we still don't know um, the quick test. We're still waiting for information on the quick test. The point of care tests, the ones you do and you have a result in a few minutes. Um, I feel like that's really important. Um, our governor has, w with a, um, other governors, uh, have formed a little group that was able to buy, guarantee a market for five, like 500,000 of these tests. We're supposed to get them, but we, and it was supposed to be mid-September, but we haven't heard anything. So. Um, we're still waiting on that. And the federal government has promised us some too. And those Abbott tests, uh, actually Deerfield Academy was supposed to have one on site and, that, and they were kicked off the list because the federal government came in and took them over for the states. And it's supposed to be distributed to us locally, but again, no idea. So we're still working on that. Um, but hopefully we've made it through Labor Day. Um, 
you know, at, at the moment we, we seem okay. But I just want to stress that local action does work. It worked in 1918 and it works in 2020. So be responsible, wear your mask, social distance, try to be safe, and so that we can um, open up as much as possible and get the kids to school. Um, I think that's about it, except that uh, I just want to remind people that we're having October 4th is our drive-through clinic, flu clinic, um, at, the, at the highway garage on Merrigan Way. We are practicing as if we were going to get COVID vaccines this winter. And so it's very important that people come and participate and be patient. This is a brand new layout for us. We're gonna have PPE and social distancing. And so it's gonna be a little bit different. On our flu clinics in the past, it was, you know, it was a real social event. It was a community event. And um, we all had great times as well as delivering the flu vaccine and drilling and working together. We haven't done it for, you know, a handful of years. I think it's been five years or so since we've had free flu vaccine. So we have forms that you can download on our website. Hopefully they're gonna go, th go um, you know, be sent out to kids um, email, uh, you know, so they'll have them that way. Um, and you can get them from the senior center if you're a senior. The senior clinic is September 30th, and that is 10 to 12. Out here, the same traffic pattern that you do to pick up food, and it's been going on for six months, that same traffic pattern is now going to be the flu and food line. So you can get your free flu food and your, fr and your fl flu clinic shot at the same time. 10 to 2, and October 1st is 10 to 1. Um, if you want to volunteer, Dave's wife, Mary um, Lipinski, or, uh, is collecting names. Uh, Jen Gannett in our office, Selectman's office is collecting names. So please um, let, let us know in the next week or two. We have a training scheduled for September 22nd. It will be a Zoom training, and it will be online for everyone to watch it if they can't make it on the 22nd. Is there anything else that either one of you had to wanted to talk about? Um, let's see. I'm. Oh, we're continuing to coordinate activities and opening. Casey, did you want to just talk about that for a couple minutes? Yeah, I could say a couple things. So we had a meeting this morning. Dick and Bob, myself, Julie Cavaco, and Candace. At the library director to discuss some reopening questions that Candace had and coordinate the changes that would have to happen in her building. So the upshot of that was she she proposed she discussed several questions she had with the board of health agent Dick Kalashevsky, and then she and Je uh, she and Julie and I discussed some of the changes we would have to make in the space to allow for reopening. And what, they're, what Julie and Candace and the staff are gonna do is come up with a plan that identifies what needs to be moved, where it should be moved. Some of the things that are in her building will, will need to store, and I discussed that with her. Um, but deal with some of the flow issues and how to meet, meet customers that come in or patrons that come in. So they're gonna start working on that. They're hoping that they'll be able to give us some sort of formative document in the next couple weeks. And I am gonna ask Dick to review that, but I need to look at it for a separate, for procurement reasons, because we gotta adjust for the supplies she might need and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I think we're moving along on that, but that's, we're still within the phase three of what the governor has in the steps of his phases. Um, and so there's other places, other groups or other services that we'll deal with as it, they become available to open. And some things won't for a while. As it is, our by appointment only um, strategy in the town offices seems to be working pretty well. Right. Um, and I would suggest we keep it that way for a while, especially since we need to see what happens with the Labor Day holiday in right. terms of third, yeah. whether that happens. I think we're all kind of waiting to see what happens on that. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, People were smart. Yeah, and we have school starting, all and that yeah. stuff. 
Yeah. The other thing that we're doing is we have seven, we have a couple of grants that we have to handle in terms of reporting um, that are going to take a great deal of time. The we have to inventory PPE to make sure that we have enough, that the offices, the other departments have enough. Right now, we seem to be okay, but I want to. I just sent an email asking to start inventorying what we have in here and whether we need to make adjustments or add things. Mm -hmm. So that as we progress through reopening, uh, we're fully stocked on what we need to have. Yep. Casey. Um, I also offered to assist Candace with some of the supplies that she might need that she hadn't anticipated at that point. Casey, I just want to make sure we're not cut short, um, you know, for PPE. So please yep. make sure Order. we're ordering way ahead, okay? Well, that's why we need to have an inventory. We yep. need to know how much we have so that we can set right. those orders up. Okay. Right. It's been confusing because we've been getting in piecemeal orders for our EDS drills that have been paid for little pots of money from different places. And it's been confusing to see PPE come in. And I want to make sure that we have enough for our town hall and town hall staff, especially with voting coming up. And um, if we do any kind of, you know, reopening or anything, okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. And I've asked the department heads to coordinate their purchases with me because some of the stuff that we order, we can get reimbursed through the CARES Act and um, the other, the other federal money, but we have to coordinate that so we're not overlapping and creating duplication. I, I would just uh, that reminds me. I, I did sign up for the COVID expense workshop on Thursday tomorrow afternoon. So I, if there's any new information, I will be um, sure to get convey that to you and to us all. Okay. 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 Um, I did. I did sign up for that. You're not. Are you going to that, Casey, or no? I don't know yet. I actually have a couple of meetings. I need to figure that That's out. That's all right. Because I actually haven't been through. I've been in so many meetings today. I haven't been through all of my email yet. All right. Well, I signed up for that one already. So I just wanted to make sure that we were up to date with the newest regulations because, mm -hmm. you know, they're changing constantly on who is reimbursing what. And I want to make sure we're not missing out on one damn dime. Right. Because this is all extra expense. No, it's a lot of money. And, and we're going through, we're burning money. So far we've been reimbursed because everybody's been on top of everything. But you know yeah. what, how they're reimbursing and who's reimbursing has been changing. And I wanna make sure that we're on top of that so we don't yep. lose a dime. Yep, okay? thank you for that. Well, that's the intent. The problem is, is I don't actually have a notice for that. So I'm gonna have to, if you can send me the notice you got, I can see if I yep. can sign up. Yep. I don't have a notice about it. It should be on the FERCOG website. If you look, if you pull down the okay. website, you'll see it. It's a, you have to register okay. for it. Um, what time does that start? Uh, it's it's. Um, what time? It's at one o'clock till two thirty. One to two thirty, tomorrow. Okay. All right. Okay. So, um, I just want to add that you know Dick Kalashevsky is our health agent. Um, he is charged with investigating all complaints dealing with the COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, and just remind the townspeople that if they have a complaint, that should go through him because he is the one that has to act on it. Uh, yeah. it's, um, some people felt that they have to report it to the state, and um, which isn't appropriate you know, because they're just going to refer it back to the town. It is it, referred back to the town. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Start, start but there. it's always better that if he knows it's going on, instead of waiting a day later when the state decides to notify us right. that something's going on. Right. Yeah. So he can investigate it right away. Uh, yeah. He's been very diligent about it, and quite frankly, he's been working a lot of hours. Yeah. Uh, and it's just, you know, very taxing. <laughs> he's been doing uh, a good job. Yeah. Right. And we've been getting a lot of complaints, and and he's doing it on the weekends. He's he's observing, you know, observing stuff um, on the weekends. He's making visits on the weekends. I, you know, the Labor Day weekend, he was out. Um, I know at least three or four oh. times. So yeah. Um, please, please know that he is responding, yep. and um, that. We are responding as a, you know, department. So, 
the only and a board. Person and he now. coordinates that response with DLS, Div um, Division of Labor, Sur Labor Services, because that's the main complaint group at the state level. And so they, com they communicate very closely and they will help him in addition to him communicating and helping them when they have questions that we may not have seen yet. I think, isn't that one of the reasons that you mentioned that, David? Yeah, yeah. and if it goes to DLS first, they take, kind of can take control out of the town. Well, well they're going to refer back to us, but it's If they don't refer back, but if, if they, they can take quicker. action. Yeah, that's and true. And it's just, you know, it's so better it's to keep it internal and make sure we know what's going on, when it's happening, yeah. and making sure we're keeping on top of it. Well, the return around rate, uh, the turnaround response is much faster. I mean, Dick addresses it that day. Yeah. It doesn't sit on anybody's no. desk. No, no. And it certainly doesn't sit. And that's sit the thing. It's easier for us to respond to DLS if we know. Right. Yeah. Right away. Yes. He does that. He's yes. quick. Yeah. Well, that's one yeah, of he's the been doing an excellent job. There's no doubt about it, in my opinion, mm -hmm. yep. everything I've seen. But it's a lot of work. It it's is. It's of, an awful lot, lot of work. It's a lot of complaints. You know, it's a lot different than just having to go out and do Title V work. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and so, it's not pleasant. Yeah. Okay. The only thing I have is two, two items that are not on the agenda that I want to talk about before we're done. But oh, okay. We'll, get, we'll put we'll them on, under on. Mm -hmm. um, unanticipated. I okay. Uh, let's move on then to design firm uh, for the town common in South Deerfield. So, Are we ready for that? Yeah, I spoke to okay. uh, you a couple weeks back about this, um, and then I brought it to um, the town common committee. They're all excited and want to get moving, so okay. we just need the select board's blessing. This is the uh, design work for um, Berkshire Design to, to plan the common and get construction drop documents done so we can go out to bid and find out how much that's gonna cost. Um, I had, I had uh, given you copies of this a couple, maybe, I don't know, three or four weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, no, survey base plan, it's like 4,350. Uh, Schematic design is 6,800. Design development is 11,600 11, for a total design fee of 22,750. And then if we go into you know construction documents and bid observation, construction observation, so the total construction fee is about eight thousand two hundred. So. So what uh, are we actually? Are you asking for for money then? Uh, total is about thirty thousand, just under thirty thousand, and that is um, money that town has approved for yep. this project, which is forty. So we're a little under that. Um, Did you have any questions on that, Dave? What's that? Did you have any questions on this? Um, I, unfortunately, I'm not on top of it. So what's that? I'm not on top of the design. Yeah, we, so, so we don't have one yet. So we've been working about, well, I'll just explain, backtrack a little bit. So we've been working about four years to get the common design for yeah. new pathways and benches and um, better accessibility from the crosswalks. And um, we've gone around and around and around and finally, um, had selected um, Berkshire Design to do a design for us, um, taking into account all the other work that Conway uh, School of Design has done, past charrette stuff. I've given, I've given them all that data and the old charrette, all that charrette paperwork, um, any old design from the 80s when the business de de department did their, business association did their thing just to give them ideas to kind of come up with something safe, economical, that we could kind of redo that, you know, the, the area and get moving on a, something that we can send out to bid, apply for a grant, whatever we can, whatever we can do to get, to get our town common going. It's been, uh, been a long haul, so. So what was the quote? Quote is here, you've had for a couple did months. Did you send it, when did you get it? I gave it to you about a month ago. I got okay. it July 24th. Okay. I just haven't looked at it for a while. So. Yeah. Um, so, do you want to move forward on that? Great. Yes. I, I'm fine with that. We've already appropriated the money, and it yeah. came in less than what we thought. Yep. Yeah. So, so um, when it, why don't you make a motion? Okay, make a motion to approve the uh, Berkshire design. Um, contract for the design work for the town common and uh, for a total of 
uh, why don't you say up to 30,000 up to 30,000 yep because this would be just under yep yep just under up to 30,000 I'll second that is there any further discussion nope um, thank you for moving ahead on it though I, mm. I guess I just want to appreciate uh, the committee has hung in there this has been yes. long dragged long out haul. haul yep so I um, can thank Jane Trujere for kicking all this off yes so anyway um, all right if there's no further discussion all those in favor aye Trevor McDaniel aye Dave Wolfen aye Carolyn Ness great thank you very okay, much okay next item on the agenda is um, the South County van acquisition and um, a policy so we had um, the boo had met um, a couple of weeks back and uh, Hatfield had graciously wanted to donate a van that they had been using um, it's a 2011 Ford Econoline with a wheelchair lift they've been using it for a while they got a new van it's still in pretty good shape we have all the service records. Um, you know, it's valued between sixty and seventy-five thousand. A new van is valued between sixty and seventy-five thousand. Um, it currently has sixty-two thousand miles on it. We thought we would um, accept it for free, which would be great. Um, we have a, you know, we want to work on. Um, it, it will sit actually for a while, and because we're not going to be running people around in COVID, so. Um, the idea is that we, we would come up with more of a, a, a policy on how it would be used, um, a little bit more flushed out. We have a page here kind of discussing, you know, what the van is, how we'd like to use it, but there's a lot more that kind of needs to get filled out here before we start okay. using it. So it would, it would be brought in and parked for, for a time, and then we'd have to insure it because it's on our property, um, I think, or have to figure that out with yeah. Casey. Yeah. Um, however, we need to do that. But then... Um, the plan is to then budget, you know, a driver and stuff, get all that into next year's um, next year's budget to, to be able to pick people. You know, the problem is we have a lot of seniors who'd like to come to the senior center and don't have transportation. So we, we thought we would, you know, have some transportation, medical appointments, you know, different things that a lot of other a lot of other senior centers have. And, and we just haven't. Um, we thought this would be a way to dip our toe in and test it, see how we'd like it maybe again fund or go for a grant for a van, van of our own down the road but it would be a good uh good way to kind of again dip our toe in and figure out how we could use it um and you know it would be nice if covid wasn't around we could get get going right away but we need to plan that out plan it safely before we start okay. using it you want to make a motion to approve that do you have any other questions dave uh no no do you have to with 11 do you have anything or eight you have to have a special license right that's all stuff i don't know but i think we yeah maybe um right now we would only be doing like you know if we did anything one or two people in it because of this six foot space you know you can't really have more yeah. more than one in there but yeah i'm not sure there, that's a good question dave i don't know insurance is uh in premium is um i think casey checked it out about 731 bucks a year um, we do have money in our budget for transportation for this year because we had planned on doing some trips and, and things. Um, so we have some money to cover things. The fuel, approximately about $2,000 with an anticipated cost, even lower if FY21 due to center being temporarily closed. Um, the idea would be, you know, two part-time per diem drivers, three to 10 hours weekly. We'd need to cover trips to and from the senior center, medical appointments if, if we look at doing that um, we would first attempt to attain volunteer drivers but if necessary would advertise the position um, uh, maybe 15 bucks an hour um, so let's see uh, you know there's obviously inspection sticker maintenance can hopefully be provided in-house but we're not sure that that was done in Hatfield Hatfield spent about 876 bucks a year in maintenance probably you know, oil changes and stuff. Um, and, and, and that was, uh, let's see, they spent 876 in maintenance over the five years they owned the vehicle. <laughs> that tells me it might need some maintenance. Well, over a five year period. It's, it, yeah. But it's only got 60,000 miles. Right, it doesn't it's, have much, so it probably had some warranty and stuff before. Um, uh, okay. 
Do so, you, you know, it, we yeah. thought at worst, we, so best we'd take it, evaluate yeah. it, could we use it? At, at worst, we could donate the thing and be done with it. Um, but I think it's worth giving it a shot just, and understanding because Absolutely. we, yeah. you know. We need to start this. We need to find a way to make it work. And, I, and we could at least have, have a tool to kind of use that in the meantime to figure out how our program would work. Right. Do we have, we have the do we have a need? What would what would be the um, We have too many seniors. What's that the demand? Rise. Yeah, they do. And, and, they and, do. And with the medical and with medical um, situation, you know, a lot of the you know doctors that, that used to be in Greenfield are now in the medical system. You have to go to Springfield. Yeah. And you know, it's one thing to have a friend drive you, you know, another elder friend drive you into Greenfield or a mm -hmm. family member. It's, you know, a couple hours. But if you go to Springfield, it's an all-day trip, and it's much more, from yep. a, you know, f scarier to drive to Springfield for a lot of people than it yep. is just to putt-putt up to Greenfield. So yep. I'm, I'm really sorry. I think we need to do this just um, to help out our seniors, and um, we need to start somewhere. So this yeah. is good. It's a good it's I a mean, I'm 100% supportive. Yeah. Okay, this is, great. It's terrible that we're not doing more. So I'd make a motion to approve the acceptance of the proposed um, donated van from Hatfield. Uh, Carolyn, you want to second it? Oh, yes, yeah, I will be glad to second it. Okay. Uh, um, question it I have for you, Casey. Um, yep. Seeing Sue Thank Corey's you. listed as a driver, she's my niece. Do I have to abstain? Um, Why I, don't you just do it? Cause yeah, because I don't. We favor it, so it's going to pass. If there's a question of appearance, then I would. Okay. So yeah. you if you abstain? think there would be a question, then I would abstain. Yeah, why don't we? Who cares? I, I don't see an issue, but anyways. I don't either. But yeah. it's just I, I just either. wanted to yeah. ask. Be so safe. Yep. Okay. So uh, motion. All, all those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Aye. Carolyn Ness. Dave Wolfram abstain. Thank Perfect. you, Dave. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm really excited about this. I'm so glad we are starting to do this. Yeah, yeah. it seems like it's a really good deal with the yeah. amount of miles on that vehicle and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We, we need it's to, got a wheelchair lift. So, oh, it does. Yep. So that's oh. what's really important. It's great. Is that we can so help. that that becomes an EMT status. Right. So yeah, that's we can that kind of we stuff can work we with Zach out. on that. It'd be nice to have some help to, to learn yeah. how, how, what we need to do. So. Yep. Um, okay. Okay. Next item on the agenda is revised multi-hazard mitigation plan adoption notice for approval and signature yay this has only been a hundred i know years. right oh my god painful so, another painful thing do you want me to read it this oh is the, good yes go okay ahead, certification driver. of adoption resolution adopting the town of deerfield multi-hazard mitigation plan whereas the town of deerfield established a committee to prepare the 2020 multi-hazard mitigation plan and whereas the town of deerfield multi-hazard Mitigation plan contains several potential future projects to mitigate potential impacts from natural hazards in the town of Deerfield and whereas a duly noticed public meeting was held by the select board on February 26, 2020 and whereas the town of Deerfield authorized responsible departments and or agencies to execute their responsibilities demonstrated in the plan and now therefore be it resolved that the town of Deerfield select board adopts the 2020 multi-hazard mitigation plan in accordance with mass general laws chapter 40 adopted and signed this date september, september 9th. 9th 2020 9 9 20. this is my last multi-hazardous plan <laughs> i can say that great it's a five-year so plan so we have a motion i move that we uh sign this certificate of adoption second all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Yay! <laughs> so do we have a fresh copy of that somewhere? We'll we'll get one. Oh, maybe Probably in the there's one there. Yep. Oh, okay. I don't know if that's the one that we oh. can sign. Do you want? It has... I'm gonna print it out for you to sign. I oh. wanted to put the date on it. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sounds good. So good. I'll be out in a second and give it to you. Okay. All right. Um, FERCOG Planning Board appointment. Do you have any um, information on that, Casey? We do. Uh, so um, uh, I think is it, it was Anna Lee, right? Is Anna, Anna Lee, Lee on? Yeah. Hi, Anna Lee. How are oh, you? Oh, Anna Lee, you're volunteered to do yes, it. Yes, she How did. Fantastic. Very excited. So oh, she'll Anna be the Lee. select board's appointee because oh. there was a planning board appointee, but also the select board, um, which I think the planning board 
has um, put forward, um, I think Anne Mary, right? I believe Anne Mary uh, Cloutier is, is oh. doing that, and um, Anna Lee would be would be our representation representation on the board. So um, I oh. would Go ahead. joyfully make the motion to appoint Anna Lee to our um, uh, Franklin County Council of Government um, representative for the Franklin Regional Planning Board from the Select Board. Um, for the municipality of Deerfield. And I will um, gladly thank, uh, and thankfully um, second that. Thank you, Annalie. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Wonderful. Yo, great. Annalie, thank you so much. Thank you very much. It is really important that we have somebody there for us. Yes. Um, Next item on the agenda is um, a police appointment. Matthew Wozna Wozna Wozniak. Um, Wozniak. Wozniak. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Wozniak. That's great. And this is from John Pachorek. Dear Honorable Board, I am respectfully requesting the following individual be appointed full time officer for the town of Deerfield effective m Monday, September 21st, 2020 with a term that expires June 30th, 2021. As the board is aware, we currently have one opening for a full-time police officer. O officer um, Wozniak is an internal candidate, 28 years old, owns a home in Montague and has worked part-time for our agency just shy of two years. He will be attending the full-time police academy at the state police New Braintree um, um, Location starting on Monday, September 28th, 2020. His starting pay is in accordance with the contract will be $23.29 hourly. Um, uh, yes, I, I would um, also joyfully make that motion and uh, to, to accept and to appoint him as a full-time, uh, Matthew Wozniak, full-time police officer. Uh, I'll second that. And I will, um, if there's no further discussion, I just want to add that um, that's really uh, wonderful because uh, Matthew is a very, very nice person. Mm -hmm. And um, it's, it's wonderful to um, promote within. So Absolutely. Very we're excited. very excited about that. Yeah. All, all those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. And thank right. you. Thank you. Uh, Congratulations. That's wonderful. Um, we've done the assistant superintendent job description. Uh, town meeting. So, well, this is part of what I wanted to get into a little bit was that we need to hammer out the, the marijuana thing a bit. And yes. that's, um, so we had a meeting, our last meeting, we talked about marijuana. Since then, I've got some maps to discuss some areas in RA district, which I sent to Casey. I'm not sure if she sent them out to everybody yet, but I really just want to talk about, you know, we need, we need to kind of figure that out uh, and then meet back with the planning board again and then try to work together to put one item forward. Um, I'm, it, I, Casey could probably weigh in a bit on what the timing is on all of that. I, we were thinking in October, right? I don't know if we're in so much of we a were rush at the in moment. October. So there's a couple reasons we were thinking in October, but weather's going to be an issue. So the reason I brought it up on the agenda is to determine whether the board wants to hold a fall town meeting. We yes. are limited right now, except for a legislative body, to how we can meet and the number of people. The issue is we want to provide a safe environment and make sure people are comfortable coming to a town meeting. Mm -hmm. So with if athletic programs are running, then it's not going to, we're not going to be able to use the space at Frontier um, unless it's free that day, what day whatever day we pick. Um, they have classroom setups at Frontier in all of their major, major and large spaces, so we aren't able to get into a space either. Um, well, we they would have to break to. things down and put, put things back up, so that yeah, could yeah. be a problem. See, the bigger problem is, is we have issues that we need to deal with. And I had sent an email out a couple weeks ago uh, alerting people to the fact that we had discussed it and we were heading into September and we needed to think about how we were going to do this. So I had put some feelers out with Scott over at Frontier just to get an idea of what kind of space was available. I think we're going to have to think more out of the box and see if we can get some assistance. 
to figure out a place we can hold it. If we are going to hold it outside, we have to have decent weather, um, though. So yes. it really behooves us to do this in October. I do not want us to do this inside. Uh, it's not safe. I don't either. But, um, you know, if we had a big enough space, it might not be an issue. No. But right now, we don't have a big enough space. No, no. We can't safely distance people uh, enough. So I, uh, we need to do it outside. Actually, October is fine mm -hmm. um, because the mosquitoes hopefully will um, be less. It'll be warmer than our Springtown meeting. Yeah, and I <laughs> mean, I chilly. can't. It was cold. <laughs> I, I don't think it's going to be any chillier than. Don and when, I were shivering. Yeah, it was cold. Yeah, but honestly, there's not going to be any bugs. So I think the mosquitoes, it's a good thing for the mosquitoes. And we have you have outdoor lights at the football field. So Casey, why don't you um, talk to Frontier and see when they are not using um, the field for us to do the same setup? Because that setup was, was very safe and it was very successful. So it was, it was, and I would need to talk to John and Brian and Adam to work through that on our end, but also, I did have a conversation with Barbara about it, and I need to have another conversation with Dan um, Graves because he's the moderator. And so he had asked me in my initial email why we needed to have it. Well, we have some financial issues we have to mm -hmm. take care of. As Trevor just mentioned, we may be in a place to deal with marijuana, and I have a comment about that, Trevor, before mm -hmm. I forget. Okay. Because um, I had a conversation with John Waite this afternoon before the meeting. Okay. Um, so there's various things we need to deal with. So I'm happy to get back in touch with Scott. Except My the land. My thought was about setting, about seeing if we can figure out space at Frontier. If we can't, then we need to go further afield, and I will see if I can get some help in the community to deal with that. But one thing I'm thinking is we need time to post, and we need time to develop the warrant. Mm -hmm. So the date that i was thinking about and like i said i haven't run this by anybody yep. so no basically I yeah we'd have to ask everybody else was, right we've got to coordinate this and i haven't coordinated with council either right but one of the dates that i was looking at was the ninth somewhere in the week of the 19th of october usually deerfield has their special and annual town meetings on mondays mm -hmm. so we would need to coordinate with Dan and with Lisa and with Barbara, because keep in mind, Barbara's going to be in the middle of early voting. And that goes not just for a week and one weekend. It's right. going for two weeks and two weekends. So she's going to be very busy. And that was one of the reasons I had that conversation. I wanted to make sure that I got it out there. If we wait too long, then we're going to be stuck. Right. Well, um, I, you know, they might not be available on Monday either. So... I mean, I might not. So we may have to pick another day. Yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm open. You know, we could move it ahead a week. You know, that um, the week of Columbus Day weekend. You know, maybe we could have it on like the 14th or something. You know, 14th so is a let Wednesday. Let me see what Dan and Lisa say along with Barbara. I want to make sure we've got our principal um, financial team. Yep. In place. Oh, absolutely. You know, Brenda yeah. and Barbara and. So that we get everything coordinated because, the, like I said, there are financial articles we need to deal with. And there yep. were things that you and the finance committee wanted to review. Right. So and we have the John land. had given me a couple questions. Yeah. Yep. So there's okay. some things we need to coordinate. And we don't have a hell of a lot of time. I think it will be so a fairly quick meeting. It will be a quick meeting, Casey. And I think it doesn't it's, need it's to be gigantic. Uh, right. They'll be lucky to get 30 people there. I know we need at least 30. But... No, uh, no, we, we need, need 35. 35. 35. Yeah, that's what I thought. We need 35. Yep. We'll, we'll get All 35. your friends, Trevor. Yep. All we'll get friends. 35. We can get 35. So I'm going to coordinate dates. What I will probably do is send you all and the Finance Committee and Capital an email and, Dan. and let them know that, you know, Blind Carbon copy you on the email that I sent to Dan and Lisa yep. and Brenda and Barb. And, you know, the department heads that had an interest in adding something that warrant yep but also this so the question to your point about marijuana trevor i had a conversation with john Waite, and he's happy to to try to coordinate dates for the select board and the planning board to discuss this yeah um it may be something that you guys and i suggested it i don't know how it'll play out but it may be something where you have a specific 
meeting the two groups together right. to discuss that one subject. Right. That's what I was hoping and for. So, yeah. So I did put it out there, and he said he would check in with the committee. Okay, they great. They do have a meeting on Monday. All right, good. So I, I, so I can, it's out there. I'm hoping that we can facilitate that. Okay. Um, the one thing, so I can't go to the planning board meeting on Monday. Okay. Um, so there's a couple things I'd like to circle back around to because I didn't catch everything. I was trying, I was listening while you guys were talking about Merrigan Way. Yeah. Um, so the Merrigan Way layout, you had accepted the layout to present to town meeting. Again, this is one of the reasons we need to have a special because town meeting has to accept it. Right. Before it becomes officially changed. Right. Yes. Um, but one question I had that was related to Merrigan Way is does the select board want to move forward with um, an ANR application to the planning board on Monday to separate, to do a, um, I forget what they call an ANR. To separate. Approval not required. To separate the, the two pieces of property that make up the entire Oxford property. Yes. We do. Because I know I'd asked, you can't, you I had can't. asked individually, but it was a question that came up. I was typing the vote as you guys were talking, and I didn't think yeah. to ask no, that's before fine. you moved yeah. to that next We do, topic. because we want to so, put this out on the market as soon yeah. as possible. Will we be able to get an RFP exactly. ready for the, the 19th or whatever of October? We don't have to go to right. town meeting to get permission. You already have permission to sell the land. Okay. We do. Yep. And it's all, the land includes both organized. those areas. You have to go through all this stuff. Um, for the, for the uh, except the but road, But we right? have to decide the RFP process. So I need to work with Lisa on that. And she has okay. sent that as a question. Okay. The other thing was, I talked to John Waite. I, I had said, I'd asked everybody that was developing the agenda, please put this on. Okay. Because they have to review the layout. Right. So I have to send that to them now that you voted. Yep. And... If I'm going to finish the ANR application, I have to sign off. But I needed you all to take a vote to actually say, "Hey, Casey, send the ANR so that we can move forward with disposing of that land." So make a motion to um, to request that we uh, the town administrator send an application for an ANR to the planning board to separate the land as 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 um, the Oxford property, the Oxford property as it's laid out in the plan. I'll second that. Half. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank you, Casey. We just got to keep this moving. We need to get yep. this going. Right, right. And so it's, it's directly related to Merrigan Way because Merrigan Way, may, it, it impacts the entire property. So, yep. um, the, so the other thing I wanted to circle back around to Trevor, because I didn't get a chance to ask the question while you were talking about it. That Berkshire design contract, yep. can I ask the board to revisit the vote? Not that I want to change anything, but I would actually prefer to send Berkshire Design a contract that our town council has developed. Yeah, no, that'd be great. We, That'd be great. If you recall, no, we this was a, a proposal with another firm. Th what's so that? If the board would be so kind to, re to maybe make a change to that vote, so we, the contract that we sign includes their terms and their prices for their proposal. Correct. But is the town's language. No, that's Would fine. Yeah, please do that. Yeah, I'll make a motion to amend, amend that vote to um, have Casey work with town council to put a contract together. That was just their proposal. There isn't a contract that we haven't signed. So, yes, if you okay. could please. And then, okay. and then, you know. Okay. I'll second that. Yep. Is there any further discussion? Oh. Nope. All those in favor? Aye. Trevor McDaniel. Hi, right, Dave Wolfram. Thank right, you for pointing that out, Casey. That's perfect. Yeah. Yep, that'd be great. Um, okay. So, um, so um, there's I, one other thing just, before I forget. And before you forget, before I forget, I just want to say. Okay, you go before I forget, because <laughs> I'm going to remember after. All right, you I'm going I'm I'm to tie a finger here. Can you um, forward on? I don't know if you have yet. Could I, could you forward on that those maps that uh, just for discussion and review? of the marijuana to the other members that I, I, had, I had received, just so that they could kind of look at that and maybe so that they'll have information when we do meet with the planning board to discuss, do we want any, yep. any part of the RA district to have cultivation? Okay, you know, thank so. you. Okay. Yep. I was gonna follow um, up I on did that. forward it, do you want me to print it too? 
Because I can print it and they can walk out of here with it. Oh, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. even just that one sheet or, yeah, I guess it had some explanation there too. So yeah, that'd be great. That'd be great. Yep. Okay. Yep, I can print out the email too. Okay. Okay, next item on the agenda is select board policies, equal employment opportunity policy. Casey, can you just explain why we're doing this right now? And where is it? So the, we don't have, so this is the thing. We can actually, Table. Um, I need some clarification from um, how we present this grant. We received a notification that there's a grant um, that the police department can benefit from. And one of the requirements, because it's a federal grant, one of the requirements is they want to see that you have various policies in place. And mm -hmm. so the equal employment opportunity policy is something that the town hasn't addressed yet. And so I had a, a basic draft that I had sent out to council for their um, review, hoping that it would be ready for today, and it isn't. Okay. Um, so we'll just table it. It may be, so I had talked to John about it because there were some other questions I had about the contract paperwork that I've been working on with him. And one of those things is it may not be, if, if the grant is furnished in a certain manner, we might not need to have it for that specific thing, but it's something that we should have in place yeah. because here's the thing. As we get more into our USDA grants, these are the types of things that the federal sure. government looks for across the board. And we so should I have it anyway. I will circle back around when I have okay. formulated language. I took a policy that I had used before. Okay. Um, we and wanna, so we, wanna we won't, sure I won't ask to you to quote it today, but keep it in your radar screen. Yep, okay. Um, good. It's, it's, it's important for us when we, when we do any of the infrastructure grants. Yep. So we need to get that no, done. No, it makes sense. Yep. I want to make sure right. you're following. So it's a little more cumbersome than I thought it was going to be, Carolyn, and that's one of the reasons that we're still waiting for I know. some language. No, that's, that's so fine. On the other hand, that's if you need to finish it, I will ask you guys, you know, for, to be able to implement it as soon as possible once, once we finish the grant paperwork. And I've been working with John on that. Okay. So the ADA it was actually due yesterday. The ADA self evaluation plan is that something oh, that gosh, we can review? That. That's okay. Can we just review like that you gave that to us yeah. to review, right? I can't make a I, move on it. Yeah, right now. I gave that to you as a what they so a you'll read. remember this, Trevor. The first and the so first Carolyn, read is a first read. Thank you. That's perfect. So first I'm just gonna write here. first read. The thing about ADA My that I would make a comment on is yes. there's some expensive things and there's Okay, things. good. I have the big one. We should start out with a plan. And this is something that I mentioned before when Kevin was here, but Kevin and I had this conversation. He noticed a couple quicker changes we could make. Yep. Um, so what you do is you present this and say, look, we've identified these as problems, and these are the solutions we need to get to. Great. And what you do is you create a capital approach to it. So yep. it is something we need to include in our capital plan. We need to notify capital that we're going to have to start doing this. Yep. Um, and so you guys need to read through the plan. I we will. You have to submit the plan to the state to finish the grant. Okay. And so Megan Rhodes, the COG, and I had talked about it. Um, Casey, I just had no, one question. Can... I had one question. If we, if we, once we vote to accept this and we come up with a plan, is a, cl is a clock clicking that we don't, that we have to actually do all the implementations by a certain date. I mean, is there any, what are the ramifications of our acceptance with, um, you know, the solutions? Because what we're doing is admitting that we got problems and then we're gonna try to work on them. But is there a clock ticking? I mean, I'm just worried about anything that we have to do mandatory this coming year in case we have some, you know, financial restrictions. I don't think there is anything mandatory. I don't, uh, so that's a great question, Carolyn, and I can't remember. I remember asking the question, but I don't remember the answer. Yeah. Um, I just want to ask it was a no. about but I do think this allows us some latitude because we've identified that we had problems. And so when I discussed this with Megan months ago, um, just by virtue of creating the plan, you're saying, look, we know we have problems. We're starting to get this together. And it can be helpful if there is an issue that comes up that we've created it, but it also is a tool for us to do our capital planning process because the, the goals identified in it are, are structured over a period of time. Well, so I will ask Megan to 
verify that, but I can't remember whether she said there was a it was a ten year thing or not. I okay. don't remember. So I'm I'll not ask. I'm not worried if it's like a ten year thing. And there yeah. are some things that we can do right away yeah. under our building maintenance. I so I wasn't concerned so much forward. about that. But I was right. concerned about some of the ones that would cost an oodles of money <laughs> when we potentially were not in the position to be spending it at that right. time. So I'm, I just okay. wanted to be sure what what the strings were attached to this Before as far we as accept time, it. Yeah. time constraints for us. Once we've accepted it, what do we have to do for sure from a capital point of view? I just want to, I want the money thing straightened out before we 100% commit, okay? So here's the thing. One thing that Megan did say was, and she didn't say it quite the same way to me on the phone, but basically the select board and uh, the administrative staff need to decide how they want to start budgeting, which is what I had just mentioned. But if we start with the simpler, less expensive thing, that shows the town is making a good faith effort oh, to I meet agree. the ADA I agree. issue. I agree. And so that's how we, that's what I mean about structuring our capital plan to progressively deal with something. And, and it's absolutely, it's crucial. And so if we start crucial. out with smaller things, it's not as big of an impact. We can plan for a bigger impact to be three or four years down the road. Right. I mean, I, I absolutely believe that we should do this. I'm not, this is not to say I'm not supportive of us doing it. It's just that I want to make sure we're not nailing us this next year. I want to make sure our, our, you know, we can, we're, our budget's going to be okay. Okay? That's all. Right. And yeah. next, this next two years are going to be the most difficult thing. Right. And so I just didn't want us to get, you know, into a situation we had no choice. We had to put money towards this and, you know, potentially we're laying off people or whatever, you know, because we had... We have to do this. I don't want that to happen. Okay. Okay. Uh, uh, so. Um, what did, that was just the first read, right? Yeah, so, we, we don't have to vote on that's that. That's the first read. So go ahead and take a look at it. Okay. I will. Uh, it's in the questions? packet so people can see their interest because the packet's on the Okay. Do, so there was, I don't know, in that plan there was an amendment to the competitive electric service agreement. Is that just. Oh, yeah. oh. Yes, yes, that's the next item. It should be oh, okay. in the folder for you to sign. So yes. Gotcha. That must be one of the Oh, yeah. okay. Got it, got it. The next, next item on the agenda is a competitive yeah. electric service agreement. Um, okay, Casey, do you want to just explain this a little bit? I'll do the best I can. I know. So if you recall, Trevor, um, over the course of August, there was a change to the, the electric bill cost estimates after we sign the Dynagy contract for the community aggregation. This is the amendment to the contract that references that. And you'll see attached, you have the, the total Schedule. for the change in the electricity cost. Do we know how much that changed? And so Denise Ballard had sent this right along here. and this was the first right opportunity I had to put it in front of you. Do you remember, is this, um, I can't remember, was the price lower or higher from when they Estimated this, is, this? I think this is... This seems lower to me. Zero, 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 one. I mean, it's a little bit lower. That's I mean, what I thought. It was a yeah. little lower. But, yeah. Okay, but good. It's the second period when you start seeing that increase. Yeah, it goes up a little bit more. And, but although that's guaranteed so, for 36 months, I think, versus the other is... Um, so the pricing adjustment is considered a change in law. Right. As um, DPU requires. Yep. And it, this, the total price increase is just over, um, is 0 0.00102. Yep. And this, the ESA, so the amendment that you see is related to that change. Okay. All um, right. So it's, it's very incremental. But the reason that we have to make the change contractually is because DPU has, has um, and I can give you another printout I have from another one of Denise's emails, um, but this, this is all tied to moving into this community aggregation yes. situation. Yes, exactly. Yep. But like I said, it, the increases, the way she put it is she said the total price increase is just over one mil 
or 0 0.00102. Right, very small. So it, it's very, small. very minimal. Yeah, okay. And okay. long term, maybe a, a change that that evens itself out. If you recall, we had that conversation yeah. when we did a bunch of those community aggregation meetings. Yep, Trevor. yep. Okay, yeah. so motion to um, uh, accept the amendment to the competitive electrical service agreement between Dynergy Energy Services East LLC and the town of Deerfield. Second. Do you second that, Dave? I'll second it. Okay, is there any further discussion? This is a bit confusing. But so now we're not going to have that differential for the street lights that they had in the other one. I I know mm. we still do. Yeah, we do. We still, yep. we still do. No, the prices are the same as residential now. Let's see. Oh, you're right. So it is a decrease. It's yeah. actually a serious yeah. decrease so. for our commercial. Yeah. Oh. Right. So yes, we definitely absolutely want to do this. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Now I understand why it was less. Yep. I was trying to figure this out. <laughs> yeah. Oh God. I know it's really complicated. <laughs> it is. Complicated. They make it complicated for a reason. Oh my yeah. God. <laughs> it's just to employ more lawyers. DPU doesn't make it any easier either. No. no. DPU makes it and, so complex. And are you ready to? Um, well, okay. I'll wait. I guess until you're ready Dave, to. Dave, thank you. Talk you about the, the good one news. That spotted the street yep. lights and the po potential for our commercial businesses to get nailed so yeah, exactly so, so this, this is, could be a good a good thing so the, the motion should be for me to sign this so yes we, and make a motion for the chair, chair to the, sign the fixed pricing yes the amended so a motion to accept the amendment and have the chair sign the contract i'll second it um is there any further discussion again this is really what this is, is it, it makes the small commercial including our street lights the same price as residential mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Okay. Thank gosh. We took care of that. Just, and Dave was sharp on that. Thank you for noticing that so, last time. Um, and then the last I gave you a handout a few minutes ago. Yes. I found... The MOU? I did I wasn't... Yes, I wasn't able to print both of them, but I found the... Um, that's the draft MOU. Yeah, this is between the FERCOG. To the 800 megahertz system. Okay, what we yeah. want to do. I didn't have the email, so I had no idea where to find it. This is this is not ours. This is the one between the FERCOG Cog. and EEOE right. or whatever. But no. um, So what we want to do is we want to vote the MOU um, today. So that, and then as soon as you have it, have us come in and sign it at our mm -hmm. leisure, okay? Because mm -hmm. so that's my question. The language yeah. is virtually sub is substantially the complete. They may make some tweaks yeah. after tomorrow's meeting. Yep. Um, but the users are us, the town. Right. So if you're comfortable voting to approve this pending review yes. um, and approval and sign at your convenience, that would be helpful, but it's up to, no, it's up to you. That's why when I, I found it, I it wanted back. to show it to you. Yes. We want to get it back as soon as we can. We, we want to, we want to, uh, two weeks is too long to wait for yep. our next meeting. Absolutely. So, so we'll, uh, go ahead. I'll make a motion to approve the MOU between the um, Franklin County, Franklin Regional Council of Governments and, you, and, the, and the towns, town of Deerfield, in this case, um, for the, um, for the, uh, Use, uh, users mm -hmm. of the Franklin County Emergency Communication megahertz. Systems in Commonwealth of Massachusetts, an operable radio system, which is the 800 system, emergency system. I'll second that. Okay, is there any further discussion? Um, and we'll come in and sign it as soon as you have um, the agreement. Sign the, the final document. Yep. 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 Um, uh, all those in favor? Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Nuss. Okay, thank you, Casey. The last thing I have. Now, um, you had a couple things you wanted to bring up. Yeah, Not one I already did, the marijuana, so that's good. So she'll send that out. The other one is um, I, I would like to take a vote to um, approve the um, athletics program at Frontier. Um, Why don't I've, you explain it a little so, bit? I did review it. Yes, I reviewed the, the paperwork as well. And really, it's just... a. Uh, Every athletics program needs to have their local boards of health review the policies and procedures like we have with all other 
entities in town that open and close, the school opening and closing, they would have policies on. So what it is, that there are three sports that are happening that they were uh, requesting. Um, let Golf. me just go back. This is for fall athletics. Um, and it is for uh, for golf, for field hockey, and cross country. And um, I've reviewed all of the um, procedures that they have in place to make sure they're safe. What the what the kids need to do, what the you know how the how the race is set up. If it's cross country, you know, there's, they go in groups. They don't all huddle together and leave from the same line. It's done you know against the clock. So different groups start at different times and stay separated. Um, and then you know how they deal with the locker rooms and the practices and and all of that stuff mass and wearing no, um competition with the field hockey and correct the, correct it's all practices that. and stuff so it's not you know all, not all these guys are banging together and you know and, and the girls are out you know hit, hitting each other so it's it's more of a practice and stuff in their own cohort so um i would like to give that approval to to um frontier so they can move forward with their sports program for the year Okay. So I make a motion to approve um, for, for the fall um, fall athletics for Frontier Regional High School. Um, uh, with limitations to those three sports that you limited? Correct. Yeah. Yep. With limitations as, as listed out in all of their. Uh, That's all there is. Yeah. Yep. Right now. Yeah. So again? other fall sp other fall sports soccer volleyball football will not have competitive play this fall. Um, but will be pushed to um, the February to February through April, and they're looking um, to offer training sessions and no interscholastic uh, competitions for these sports. At this point, I mean that can be that. Yep, hopefully it can change. Uh, that's if we can keep our COVID numbers down. Um, you, that's the intention. You wanted a motion again, Casey? Yeah, could you just clarify yep. the motion? To yep. So the motion is to uh, is to approve the fall athletic sports of golf. of golf, field hockey, and cross country, and and the other you know th those specifically because they'll have competition. The other sports of soccer, volleyball, and all and football will all go on, but not have competition. So for for the okay. um, the fall 2020 session. I'll second that. Okay. Is there any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Oh, Aye, Dave Wolfram. Aye, Carolyn Ness. Thank um, you. All this stuff is subject to review, obviously, and constant mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. monitoring. So I know Darius sent it to Dick. I just don't know if he, if he reviewed it with Darius or not. That was no, the reason it, I asked it, you that, Trevor. Yep. Yeah. We, um, Dick has seen it for, I mean, he had the, we got it last week, I think. So I, I don't remember what day, but. There's been a little, little bit of time to review it. Okay. Um, is there anything else? Uh, we have public comment now. Is there any public comment um, at the moment? Do you hear anybody, Trevor? Uh, anybody on the line? I do not. Um, let's see. See if anyone's nope, on. Nope. Nobody's saying anything. Okay. Um, our upcoming meetings are September 23rd, October 7th, and the 21st of October, November 4th and 18th, and then December 2nd, 16th, and 30th. Um, if we have no other manner uh, matters before us, I would um, appreciate a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, and thank you all for your help. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Casey. Okay. Yes, thank you, Jen, for hanging in there. Chris Harris is on the line. Hey, oh, Chris, Chris Harris, thank you. Chris, did you have anything sorry. you wanted to say before we adjourned? Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. I did the star six, but it didn't work. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I was, oh. I was, I thought so, that might be your number. <laughs> it looked like a Cali number. Yeah. yeah. So, so yeah, the only comment is that it's a long meeting and all the, all the contributions and efforts. But I have a comment about the upcoming special meeting. The I, special I town really would encourage, I would really encourage you to get it set up outside and I guarantee you a lot more than 35 persons will show up <laughs> come rain or sunshine Good. with umbrellas yeah. and participate because we've seen that over the last two years. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Great. I, I hope so. Yeah, I, I, Chris, I agree with you 100%. We want it outside and I actually think it's safer because we don't have to worry about mosquitoes, you know, and stuff yeah. like that. So 
Um, I don't want to. We don't. We don't need to be fancy. People right. will show up and they'll bring their umbrellas. I agree. And they'll suffer through it. Yep. 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 It does not need to be. Yep. That's okay. all I'll say. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you, Chris. Yeah. I thank really you again for serving it. on DDIC for us. And, yes. Uh, thank you. Have you. A meeting. Do you have a meeting today or? Was yeah, it we today? have a meeting tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, right? Oh, yep. Okay. Good. Thank you very thank much you. for volunteering for that. Yep. We really appreciate That's it. Great. Okay. Um, so we have a motion to adjourn. Oh, we have a second. I'll second it. All Any? those in favor? I, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. I, Carolyn Ness. I hope everyone has a lovely evening and please, please be safe. Be safe. Wear your mask, socially distance. Oh, I forgot to say thank you to Kevin and um, Vern Harrington of Thera uh, Street Associates for making our divider boards here, plexiglass divider boards. I don't know if you can see them there. It's wonderful. It makes us feel so much safer. So anyway, thank you very, very much, everybody. Have a nice evening.